Hello everyone, Pastor Michael Patterson here, and I'd like to take a moment to share a word with you about the new birth experience. The Bible shares a story with us in the book of John about a conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. We see Jesus commanding us to be born again of the water and of the Spirit. We also see later on in the same chapter of John 3 that Jesus says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Why would Jesus tell us that if we believe, we should not perish? Well, the simple reason that we should not perish is because Jesus Christ has made a way for us to have everlasting life. By believing in Him, repenting of our sins, being baptized in the name of Jesus, receiving the gift or the promise of the Holy Spirit, and enduring to the end. Experiencing the new birth is a simple uh, process of repenting of our sins, being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and uh, receiving the gift, the promise of the Holy Spirit. And the way we know we've received the promise of the Holy Spirit is that we speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance, just like they did in the book of Acts. And repentance is just simply turning away from sin and turning towards God. So why does the biblical command to repent really matter? Well, first off, we have to realize again that we are all sinners saved by grace and the judgment of sin is death, eternal separation from God. And also, God has provided us with a way of salvation through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And repentance is the first step of the new birth. And we believe salvation begins but does not end with repentance. Not only must we repent, but the scripture teaches us that we must also take on the name of Jesus in water baptism for the washing away of our sins. Baptism is not merely an outward sign of an inner work of grace, but instead the Bible indisputably declares that the water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is absolutely essential for our salvation. And when we are baptized, the Word of God instructs us that the proper method is by immersion, complete immersion in water. So based on clear teachings from the Word of God, we believe that water baptism should be performed in the name of Jesus Christ, which means invoking the name of Jesus orally. It also means rebaptizing those who have been baptized any other way, because where God enters into covenant, there he places his name. The name of Jesus is the only saving name, the only name for remission of sins, and the highest name and the name in which Christians are to say and do all things. You notice the first message preached by the Apostle Peter after Jesus' death in Acts 2 Verse 38, Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And one of the first things we discover in Scripture about the Holy Spirit is that it is a promise from God to everyone. In fact, in Joel chapter 2, verses 28 through 29, it says, it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. So you see, the Holy Ghost is a direct promise from God. He will come and fill our hearts with His Spirit because wherever He puts His name, there He dwells. And the next thing that the Bible makes perfectly clear is that receiving the promise of the Holy Spirit is absolutely essential to our salvation. It's a direct command of Jesus Christ. It's confirmed as essential to salvation by the apostles. Even in Romans chapter 8, Verses 9 through 11, he says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. So, we believe that receiving the Holy Spirit is essential to our salvation and that it can be experienced by anybody and everybody, anytime, all the time. 
We believe in the essentiality of receiving the Holy Spirit and that speaking in tongues is the initial sign that we have received that promise from God. Biblical salvation is the identification with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the gospel, through repentance, baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, and receiving the gift, the promise of the Holy Spirit as evidenced by speaking in other tongues and by producing the fruit of the Spirit in our life. So thank you for this time together. I love you, and we'll see you again soon. God bless you.